So don't worry, the channel's not changed. It's not Gadget John now does campers or anything like that. So basically this is my T6, VW T6, Transporter T6. It's a two litre diesel, a six speed manual transmission, and it's a 2016 model. And it came with this really weird interior. So I've had a bit of a busy week on the van this week. Uh, I've taken out the old interior. Um, and one of the things that I found with taking out the old interior was how badly it was put to in. For example, the whole kitchen unit was held in by two screws, two little wood screws like that. Um, the fridge wasn't held in at all. So that was just bouncing around in there. Um, the hob and sink had about two screws in it of about five or six it can possibly be fitted with. They placed the rubber grommets, you know, that it, the glass sits on. They placed them in there and just dropped screws in. I don't think they knew that screws actually need to be screwed into something, maybe. Um, the electrics were a bit of a nightmare as well. So And so was the flooring. So basically, I ripped all the bad stuff out. And, um, and it's now time to put it right. So I've just picked up now, got it in the back here, um, new ply flooring. I've got some new um, Alto something Lino, something like they put in hospitals, really hard wearing Lino to go on top. And um, then I'm gonna redo all the electrics with the right cable sizes and all that kind of stuff. Um, and then obviously build the furniture I've just bought the kit form um, and put that in there. And then hopefully within the next couple of weeks get the bed fitted in there as well. So I've got a couple of questions that I'd like your actual advice on, if that's um, something that anybody can give me some advice on. Grey waste, what's the etiquette? Do you drill a hole through the floor, drop a pipe and let it go wherever you are? Or do you collect it? Um, I've been um, a caravaner and I've had one motor home. Um, so it was collection of grey waste was always a thing. You had a container for grey waste and that was always a thing. So to be told by all these professional camper van companies that I've been speaking to over the last few weeks, great waste, no, you just drill a hole and pop it outside and that's it. Seems a bit weird to me, I think that you should actually collect grey waste. Um, so what are your thoughts on that one? Do you collect it or do you chuck it outside? Or maybe you put a hole to outside and have a collapsible bucket that you collect it with or something like that. Solar panel or generator? And the reason why it's a bit of a um, and kind of don't really know what to do on this one is because we've got a high low roof fitted to this so the pop top is really high at the front I think it goes up like about five or six feet at the front and about three foot at the back which means if I put a solar panel on and I drill through the roof which is fiberglass not only have I got to seal that hole but I've then got cables coiled up in the roof that then I've got to come into the actual van because you understand that the high low run has a uh, a floor which you sleep on so I've got to get through that into the van then to the um, solar uh, control panel and then to the battery so that's my first concern about doing all that drilling and putting all those cables in because I can't just glue it to the outside and have a trailing cable like a lot of people do because when the roof was extended you'd need to make sure the cable had the length for that and also then if the roof is down you'd then have this coil of cable sitting around the back of the van chaffing around and stuff. I'm not happy about that. And then the next one is one of um, solar panel collection, um, that, you know, how it collects its energy. You would always have to pitch such that if you raised the roof, that the roof pointed at the, the sun. Um, otherwise, which is probably going to be quite difficult, you've got to face um, a certain way most of the time for that to work. If you face the other way and you had the roof up, then chances are it would never collect any energy. So those are my thoughts on solar, and I'm a bit iffy about that one. So um, I watched the Indie Project. That's another YouTube channel. Check it out on here. Um, and they've recently bought a little suitcase generator. And I'm kind of leaning towards that more than solar because it's a tiny little thing. Yeah, you've got to carry a bit of petrol with you as well. Um, but you can switch that on whenever you need it if you're wild camping um, then obviously you're not going to disturb people if you're on a campsite you can always just plug in anyway I've got 240 or I will have when I've all finished so I can plug a generator in or I can plug in on a campsite that will give me all the power I ever need plus it'll top my battery up whereas solar will only ever top my battery up a little bit and dependent on you know UK weather which is really bad as well might never actually top my batteries up on some days 
So I'm thinking little kind of suitcase generators the thing. Um, just wondered if you've got any opinion on that one as well. I have a third question as well, and that is when you fit in your own bed when you fit in your own camper out, do you fit the kitchen first or the rock and roll bed first? Because I'm kind of seeing from everybody else's stuff that they always fit the kitchen first. Well, you speak to the people that supply the rock and roll beds and they say, no, you fit the bed first so you can make the cupboards fit to size. Well, I'm kind of a bit torn about that one. I would have thought you'd fit the furniture first and then you'd fit the bed afterwards. But, yep, any advice on that whatsoever? Um, I'm, I'm going to film everything we do because um, obviously a lot of the things on YouTube, people don't give a lot of detail. So I'm going to try and give as much detail as possible at each stage. And then when it's done, I'm going to tell you who I bought the bits from as well. Because um, I don't want, you know, you read all these stories in the paper about, oh, this YouTuber came along and he said, um, if you sell me the kitchen cupboards, um, I'll, I'll tell everyone on YouTube if you do me a discount. I don't want to get into that. I love supporting small businesses. So my whole goal would be if the two suppliers I've chosen, the one for the fitted or the, the kitchen kind of um, kit, um, if if they're brilliant and it all works out fine, then I'll give them a full mention at the end of it. Probably even go back to the workshop and film them making it all and stuff like that because they're really nice people so far, very helpful. Um, and the same with the bed as well. Two very small companies, so one for the kitchen, one for the bed. Um, and if it all works out great, then they're just going to get free plugs. I'll go there and I'll do a full video on them and give them promotional material or whatever. Because supporting local small businesses is very important to me given that I am a small business that I run myself. So I don't want to mention who they are so far. I want to do a full kind of like coverage on them when the van's done so you can see them when it's all finished, um, how their products look and how great they are. Um, so that's the, the theory behind that one. Um, so anyway, there's, um, there's a lot of work to do. Uh, there's a few questions there that you can answer and help me out with if you wouldn't mind. And um, hopefully next week we'll have a bit more of an update because the ply floor is going down this week. So I'm taking out the ply as well that was um, fitted in the van because it was about um, four or five different pieces and different levels. It was only 9mm ply, but I've gone for 12mm now. Um, so there's all sorts of different things there that I've got to do. There's a big hole in the floor where the uh, table support had gone through and they drilled straight through the floor. You can actually see outside from the inside of the van now. And there was no air vent holes anywhere for gas to escape if there was a gas leak. So uh, what I'm probably going to do is partially plug up that hole uh, and then put the air vent in once I've fitted the new ply. So at least there's one air vent in the floor of the, uh, of the camper van now. Um, but other than that, I think that's about it for this week's update. And um, check out next week when we should be doing, like I say, at least the flooring should be going down. Um, and hopefully I'll have more of an idea about the electrics, how they've all been sorted out and, and wired in and changed over to the proper kind of um, diameter wires and things like that. And um, yeah, maybe an update on the solar um, generator kind of question. And also about grey waste as well. If I've got enough responses about that, then I'll include that on, a, on next week's update. So thanks very much for watching. Uh, please do leave all your comments and uh, any questions or anything like that down below. Um, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And until the next time, take care. Bye.